So now we're going to talk about inhibitors and activators. And just like they sound, some of them are going to help an enzyme to do its job, activators, and some of them are going to prohibit an enzyme from doing its job, inhibitors. Wow, go figure. Okay, so we're going to talk about the differences between the two, and we're going to start by talking about inhibitors. So these ones are going to try to keep an uh, enzyme from doing what it's supposed to. Now, when would you have inhibitors happen? Well, there's tons of examples. Um, there are inhibitors that... Um, are medications. So maybe you're getting a headache because some enzyme is working out of control. And when you take the medication, that actually stops that reaction from happening, right? That could be an example of that. Okay, so there's going to be two types, competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. Now, when I drew an enzyme for you earlier, it was um, a little simplified just to kind of get the point across. So now we're going to get a little bit more in depth. So if I was going to draw an enzyme, here we go, like this. And I need to clear a little section right there. Okay, now um, what I'm drawing over here is something called the allosteric site. Site, okay. And that is going to be coming up as we talk about inhibitors and activators, okay? So we know that we've got a substrate that looks like this that's going to want to click into place on our enzyme. However, we could have an inhibitor. Now, a, not, a competitive inhibitor, what that's going to do is it's also going to have a similar shape, but it might just be a little bit different, and that's actually going to click into the active site and it's going to keep the substrate from being able to click in. So that's going to be an example of a competitive inhibitor. Okay, so that's going to be how a competitive inhibitor is going to work. Now the next one that we're going to talk about is going to be a non-competitive inhibitor. And so I'm going to erase this because things are going to be changing. Okay. And a non-competitive inhibitor is going to do something else. What it's going to do is it's going to click into the allosteric site. And as a result of that, it's actually going to cause the active site to change shape. And what's going to happen as a result of that is that once again, the substrate can't click in. So that's going to be an example of a um, non-competitive, that's the longest word ever, inhibitor, right? And so that one is going to the allosteric site. It's not competing for the active site with that substrate, okay? Now, there's going to be also activators. And so I'm going to just clear this and show you what an activator is going to do. So once again, we have our enzyme, right? And uh, we need to make our little allosteric site. Okay, there's our allosteric site, right? So same setup. And what's going to happen with an activator, let's do it in a pleasant color like green. An activator is actually going to click in to the allosteric site down here, and that's actually going to keep the active site intact. Okay, so we're going to say this one is an activator. And so that one is going to go to the allosteric site, and it's actually going to keep the active site open. Okay, so I often give the example in, in class um, to kind of give you a little bit more of a real life situation how this would work. So a competitive inhibitor is basically competing for the same active site, right? So if you've ever been in a parking lot at the grocery store and you see that awesome space open up right at the front, you're like, yes, because I'm lazy and I don't want to walk, right? So you're all excited and then some jerk goes right in in front of you and takes the spot. That's a competitive inhibitor, right? It has taken the same active site that you were going for. You're the substrate in this situation, right? The parking spot is like the enzyme or the active site, right? 
Non-competitive inhibitors are still keeping that active site from being clicked in, right? So we're driving in the parking lot, we see a spot, and we're like, oh, sweet. Then we realize it's someone in one of those huge SUVs that's purposely parked in two spaces a little bit so that your car can't fit into that parking spot, right? So that's a non-competitive inhibitor. They haven't taken your spot. They've just changed the shape of your spot, so now you can't get in. Still super annoying, and you still can't park there, right? Whereas when we talk about activators, activators are going to be there to actually keep that active site open, right? So let's say I'm with my husband and we're driving and I'm like, ooh, I see a spot up there. Get out of the car and you better go stand there until I get there, right? So he's going to block anyone from getting in there so that I can get in there, right? He's in my activator. So that's going to be how those things work. Now, as far as these ideas go, um, there are going to be things called enzyme cofactors and coenzymes. You may have heard of like CoQ10. Some people take that as a um, supplement. And so these guys are kind of going to be activated they're going to help an enzyme to do its job. So um, in the next video, we'll get into how that works because there's a very important one that you want to pay attention to.